Hello everyone, I am Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we're going to continue reviewing this $2,500 buy-in World Series of Poker final table. This was on GG Poker. So uh, thanks to them and the World Series for letting me use this Cards Up content for us to review and analyze. This is currently part three of this final table. This was a long final table. Go back and watch the previous parts if you feel inclined. In this scenario, we have the uh, chip stacks over here on our left. As you see, Bellarmino is our big stack. He has been playing very aggressively so far. He's playing 38% of hands, goodness gracious. Simon's been sort of handcuffed because he has Bellarmino on his left. Same thing for Dong. Ayaz has been um, active enough, but not insane. And then these three players are all relatively shallow stacked. All right, so we have a raise, preflop, continuation bet. Check call from Simon. I think it's fine to check call, but it's already starting to get dicey. You have to shy away from scenarios that are going to be roughly break even. And I think check calling out a position with the queen ten of spades here is going to be roughly break even. Same thing on the turn. Like there's no guarantee you're going to get paid off if you hit. And it's like you just cannot win at the showdown, right? So from out of position, I think you'd rather just fold the flop immediately. Unless you're facing a very, very tiny bet. I know... You're not like trying to fold the flop with gut shots and backdoor straight draws, but on ace x x it's just so easy for you to be in bad shape. Like he was right there against the random ace x, right? All right, two big blind raise. So you see jack 10 snap fold from Patrick. I think that's fine. It's always nice to get the aces. This final table features Kristen Bicknell. She is going for her third World Series of Poker bracelet. I always enjoy watching the best players in the world play because you get to learn how they do what they do, how they accumulate chips, and um, you hopefully you can apply some of that to your strategy. I love the Lent Men Bet play by Bellarmino. I may just open rip it all in, though. This is a scenario where notice now there are three, well, four shallow stacks, and Jerome is one of the bigger shallow stacks with 17 big blinds, so I think I would just be ripping it in with these hands. Like right here, if Queen 8 jams, it's pretty close for ace-king offsuit, you could run that through ICMizer if you wanted. But now when he min-raises, he just gets jammed on. We reviewed a previous World Series of Poker final table um, where I spent a lot of time going through ICMizer, so we're not going to do that today. I already showed you how to do that. In that video, go back and watch it. We discuss how to use all these various programs at PokerCoaching.com as well, so... Check it out. Don't be afraid to do the work. I imagine Queen 10 offsuit is going to min raise, but I actually don't hate the fold either because if Queen 10 min raises, the big blind with the big sack can certainly rip it in very wide because of the one, two, three other shallow stacks. And now Kristen's very clearly a middle stack, right? She's chipped up a bit above the other. Um, the other three short stacks. So I get the idea of just open folding, but I think against most people it's okay to limp or min-raise. If you limp and face a raise, you can easily call and then still get your money in if you get any reasonable pair or draw. And if you miss, you can just fold. That said, I get the idea of folding. I, I completely agree you should be very snug in that scenario. Ace-5 jams. You gotta think this is just a call for the king-9. You don't love it, but what are you gonna do? Two pair for the king nine. Full house. And just like that, Patrick is out in seventh place, $55,000. Not a bad payday at all. This was a $2,500 buy-in event, so you got 20 buy-ins or so. That's pretty sweet. Ace-queen offsuit goes for the min-raise. You could certainly just rip it in. I have no problem with that. Min raise and then call off is also fine though. There are a lot of scenarios where you can really go either way. You can kind of do whatever you want a lot of the time. <laughs> Just do whatever you want. This could be trouble for Bellarmino. Looks like Simon has a very, very easy all in. Bellarmino has a very easy call. Kings against Ace Track, who's going to win? Oh boy, oh boy. Ace 8 King. No, kings win on the river, as they should. 
Kings very often will win on the river. A lot of people get annoyed when they make a final table and they get unlucky. I mean, the other day I was chip leader with eight people left in a thousand dollar buy-in tournament. And I took eighth, lost four hands, <laughs> just lost four normal hands. And I was out and there's just not a whole lot you can do about those scenarios. And uh, sometimes it happens. So when it does happen, don't be angry. Don't be bitter. Realize you're not going to win every hand you play. I mean, obviously you'd rather win the hands you play at the final table, of course, but you don't always get to pick when you win. Simon goes for the min-raise. He's going to get jammed on, I imagine. And now he has to fold. Kington suit is a hand that you probably should just min-raise fold like was done there. Bellarmino's playing every hand, but he's also getting a lot of good hands. <laughs> it sure makes it easy to play the big stack when you get all the good hands. So Pocket Jacks will probably raise this, although it may just rip it in. I would typically min-raise, I think, but shoving's fine. If he didn't min-raise, Dong would likely call and see the flop. Again, we're starting to get back in this scenario where there are three very shallow stacks and four if you count Dong. And for that reason, you really don't want to get it all in roughly flipping or even with 60% equity, you'd much rather just win the pot immediately. Because I have to realize, when you win the blinds, that actually is a bit of a success. I mean, you add 10% or something like that to your stack, which is substantial as a shallow stack, sometimes more, 15 or 20%. So you don't really mind just winning the pot, which is why you do see hands like jacks and um, ace-queen just rip it in. Because you don't want to be flipping, especially as there are multiple shallow stacks at the same time. And now if you're the only shallow stack, or perhaps there's only one other shallow stack, then it becomes much more reasonable. So this is a spot where if I was Bellarmino, I would definitely just open rip it in with hands like queen eight suited. It's like, yeah, they flop well enough, but you have loads of equity. He continues betting the turn pretty well, I think. Um, this is a scenario where if you limp, Jerome's going to jam the ace-x preflop, so you have to discount a lot of ace-x from his range, which means the eight is quite strong, stronger than you may initially think. Kind of surprised to see a fold from any two cards here on the button. I think it's pretty free to min-raise for Bellarmino. <laughs> He's playing half the hands, though, so I mean, what can you do? You got to fold every once in a while, or at least you should consider folding every once in a while. Interesting 2.7 big blind raise from Kristen. This is, this is strong. This is the classic raise small from the big blind blast off play, I bet. Oh boy, buckle up. You can go for a small bet on the flop, I imagine. And then ramp it up on the turn a little bit. Bet like 280, 250k on the turn and then rip it in on the river. I love it. Are we going to see it? No. She gives up. Brutal. And then she gets there on the river. Success. Oh, wow. Jerome goes for the river bluff. Savage. These players are battling. Uh, is a jack ever folding? I wouldn't fold a jack. Not that that means the opponents will fold a jack, which is a very likely hand for Kristen. She could easily have a diamond. Diamond obviously never folds. I don't think we need to bluff this. I think it's probably just a check on the river for Jerome. Does Kristen find a call? I guess close. She rips it in as a bluff. <laughs> what are they doing? They're going, they're going nuts here. Wow. Dong says OMG. It's definitely OMG if you could see the two hands. Kristen probably correctly assumed that Jerome doesn't have a whole lot of uh, strong diamonds in her range, where obviously Kristen could because she raised from the big blind, right? So I get the idea of raising there. Maybe she just thinks she does not win a showdown ever. If you think you do not do not win a showdown ever, then it's probably, probably fine to go for the bluff, I suppose. So here we have Crink Queen Jack raises. Jerome's all in for a shallow stack, and... Doesn't look like a five. So Jerome is going to be out in fifth place. Gets a hundred. Wait, fourth. What place did he get? Sixth place. Got 75,000 bucks. Not a bad payday. Not first place, of course, but not a bad payday. I can tell everyone when you don't win the World Series of Poker events, when you're kind of close, it's frustrating. It's definitely frustrating. <laughs> but all you can do is play your best. All right, it's going to fold around to, 
Haiga on the button who raises. And I imagine the twos are just going to rip it in. I think I would tend to rip it in here. Again, there are three relatively shallow stacks, which is a pretty dicey spot. You don't really want to get it in flipping, but I think you have a lot of old equity against the big stack button raiser to the point that you can just shove and have a lot of old equity. Check, check, top pair, bad kicker. I think that's reasonable. The problem, though, is that whenever you check, check, top pair, bad kicker, you're really hoping to induce bluffs from your opponent. But when three people have 20 big blind stacks, they're not going to be bluffing all that often. So I think you'd probably rather just bet the king five on the flop, but I get the idea of checking back marginal made hands on coordinated boards because you don't especially want to get raised. If you do get raised there, it's pretty nasty. But I'm cool with that, with that check back. I like the check back a lot better if you're going to induce bluffs, though. These are all bad hands. I imagine Bellarmino should still just be raising a ton. Like, I'd be 3xing it or 4xing it from the small blind a lot. And that is what he does. Just applies immense pressure to the, the uh, other shallow stacks, especially with Simon sitting there and Dong not in the hand as well. This is just a great spot to be aggressive. Like right here, I'd raise this Jack-5 offsuit. Simon could probably min-raise this Queen-Jack offsuit. I think Simon's just been a little bit snug. And I, I think he probably would have fared a little bit better here so far if he just raised a little bit more often. I don't think he needs to be insane, but like, you know, Queen Jack's reasonable. It's certainly not absurd by any means. And the problem with blinding out is that you really do kind of get in this blind out war where you kind of ruin the chances of all the shallow stacks if you just sit here and blind out unless one of you gets hit by the deck. And of course, you know, you may get hit by the deck. You may be the lucky one, but you probably won't be. This is another good spot for the big stack now on the button. Once Bellarmino folds his big stack, this is a great spot for that player to raise. We may see a bunch of trading of blinds back and forth until these shallow stacks get set up. All right, here we have a limp. So hoping we get to talk about this. As the non-big stack, but still a reasonable stack, in extreme payout implication scenarios like this, Usually the play is to limp with your hands that flop pretty well and also limp with some very strong nut hands and then raise with the hands that are um, strong like, um, you know, ace-queen ace that can easily con continue against the three-bet. A six-suited, if you raise this and get three-bet by the big stack, which very often should happen because there are three shallow stacks you have to fold. So hands like ace-six-suited are very, very nice to limp. We actually talk about this in my most recent book, here it is. Excelling at tough no limit hold'em games. You can get that on Amazon or dnbpoker.com. Giraffe Ganger here. He was the number one player in the year for a while. Number one player online for a while. I say player of the year. Don't know if they have that online. He was the number one player for a while. He has a chapter, a big chapter, going through two final tables he played. He goes through lots and lots of hands as the medium stack in scenarios just like this. And you know what he advocates? A whole bunch of limping. Because if you raise and get three bet, it's awful. But if you limp and get raised, it's okay. Like right here, you limp a six suited, you get raised. It's okay. Call and see the flop. Notice if you raise the two big blinds and got three bet to 11, though, or 10, it's miserably bad. And yeah, this is going to result in you losing some pots you perhaps would have won by being aggressive. But you're never all in against the other big stack, which is fine. Like you just want to see flops, make hands, and then not fold. But you don't get to see the flops if you raise and get three bet a lot. So that's a pretty neat spot to go for the limp. But yeah, check out this book, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games. It's a good book. A lot of my projects now are geared towards helping me get better at poker. Take a look at this book. It's big. It's, it's in-depth. Lots of Pio Solver. Lots of Munker Solver, right? It's good stuff. Last for fast forward a little bit. We don't need to sit here during their break. All right, we are back. 10-8 offsuit raises. Kristen in the small blind with King-10 suited. Ugh. This is another kind of dicey spot where your goal is just flop a hand and not fold. Uh, that's a pretty good hand. She has four of them. One, two, three, four kings. <laughs> I also think ripping it in preflop would be fine. I probably would have just shoved preflop. 
Because it's obvious Bellarmino's raising literally every hand. Kristen's just going to slow play this maximally. <sighs> Check again, I guess. If Bellarmino has ace high, he's going to call a bet. But if he has worse than that, he's at least going to consider a bluff. Maybe he just never bluffs here. If Kristen does bet, she probably wants to go... I would have gone probably a little bit bigger. Because if he does have a full house, he's never going to fold. And if he does have ace high, he could very easily just hero call. And if he does have... Um, yeah, if he has a full house, he'll just call a bigger bet. So I think she probably left a little bit of money on the table, but maybe not. Also, when you bet bigger, you get to have more bluffs. Maybe she just realizes she doesn't have very many bluffs there, which, again, with payout implications, you probably shouldn't. There's a giant section in this book as well, Excelling at Tough No Limit Hold'em Games, by Vlada, who actually just chopped the $5,000 Stadium Series, the freeze-out for half a million bucks the other day. Um, his whole section is on ICM at the final table, and it's enlightening. I learned a lot. I feel like I'm pretty good at ICM, and I learned a lot. Which again, that's the kind of content I'm making now. I'm making content for me. I'm talking to the best poker players in the world and consolidating all that information and giving it to you. It's kind of what we're doing out here, right? These players effectively agreed to have their cards shown when they played the tournament and we get to learn from them, which is great. Notice again, Bellarmino just leaning on the other stacks. 9-3, I would raise. Queen Jack, I would call. So now Kristen has a very obvious mar uh, middle stack. She does not want to just be making big all-ins or anything like that. Rough flop for her. Really, you just don't want an ace -X -X flop. If you get over cards or whatnot, you can very often continue. But when you get the ace -X -X flop, it's just terrible for the queen jack. Another nice raise spot. I mean, look at Bellarmine who's playing 58% of hands. You ever seen anyone play 58% of hands and they're doing it correctly? <laughs> Let's see if he goes for it with a 7-2 offsuit. Hey, he may. So Simon may rip it in with this ace-2, but I think it's probably a little bit wide. I like the fold with the 7-2. I do want to make it clear that you should probably not be raising every single hand. Um, but you certainly should be raising often. I hate that min raise from Ilya. I think Ilya. Ilya? Ilya? I think you're going to get called a lot. And um, then you just have to rely on post-flop fold equity, and I'm not sure you have a lot. It looks like you may double up Dong if he goes for the bluff. If he checks and Dong goes all in, I think it's an easy fold with a middle pair. Tiny bet. It's fun. I think it's still probably just a fold. Notice the king-queen got there. Notice, uh, or king-x got, the king-ten got there. Notice um, you just lose all the ace-x that could value bet. I think Dong probably wants to jam in that scenario to try to look as bluffy as he possibly can. Whenever you have an effective nut hand, it's kind of hard to go wrong by betting big. And uh, flush in that scenario is obviously an effective nut hand. So this seems like an easy all-in. So now notice that Simon has trickled down to only nine big blinds. He's a very obvious shallow stack. When you're the obvious shallow stack, you just have to make something happen. And you should be jamming almost as if there are no payout implications. Obviously, there are some, but... It's pretty clear all these players are playing reasonably. Like, no one's... Like, the two big stacks aren't just blasting each other. If they're blasting each other, perhaps eventually one of them will bust the other one. But that's not really what they're doing. So I think it's okay to play snugly. I'm sorry, I think it's okay to jam as if as if the opponents are playing snugly. Can't jam the, the queen four. I love how they do the um, X number of hands per level on the site compared to a lot of other sites that just have time to blind levels. When they play X number of hands per level, there's no benefit whatsoever in stalling or anything like that, which is good. I think that's a silly aspect of poker. This actually used to be how sit and goes were back in the day. Uh, you would play 10 hands per level, if my memory, recall, memory is recalling that correctly. Here we have an easy all-in from sixes. <laughs> the long's going off with these emoticons. 
He's having too much fun. All right, King-7 is another easy all-in. Only five players remain. Fifth place gets $102,000, so we're playing for substantial money at this point. Queen-8 suited. I would go all-in. This is not a, an amazing all-in spot, but this, that's another example of a scenario where when you are the obvious shallow stack and the other players are just not fighting too hard, you probably do want to just shove the queen-eight suited. It's definitely going to be profitable, I think. And when you're the shallow stack, you just have to take any profitable spot. King-two suited on the cutoffs a little bit too tight, though. All right, raise from Bellarmino. Queen-jack suited can either call or jam. Um... What would I do? It's close. You can go either way. I think I'd probably just jam over Bellarmino because it's pretty obvious he's raising very, very wide when folded to. So you're going to have an immense amount of fold equity. When you do get called, Queen Jack suited flops well enough anyway. It has enough equity. So I, I think it's probably okay to just rip it in, but calling's fine. Calling's definitely a good default if you think your opponent's not raising literally any two cards. Should also go for the check raise. I think you can go for a small check raise. This is a great spot for that. There's lots of draws you'd like to check raise that you'd love turn fold equity with as well. And if you're going to do that with some draws, you also want to check raise some nut hands. And this effectively counts as a nut hand. You may say, top pair only? That's a nut hand? Uh, well, yes. Well, yes, it is. When you have no chips, top pair is the nuts. All right. Simon's going to have to win a flip. Let's see if he can do it. Kristen's going to jam, and then small blind has an easy fold with eights, I think. Very easy fold with eights. When under the gun jams, yeah, that range can be kind of wide, but Kristen has to have a very reasonably strong range to jam. Like, I don't even know, maybe nines are better, ace, king, ace, queen, or something like that. So a, a very, very good range. This is a terrible flop for tens. <laughs> Drawing to literally one ten. All right. Down to four. Next place out gets 140K. And just like that, take a look at the chip stacks. Now, we have the big stack with all the chips, 235 big blind stacks, and now a 819 big blind stack. This is a spot where, again, Bellarmino should just be really, really, really blasting his opponents. Like, I would probably just three bet here. I know it seems a little bit aggressive, but... If players are raising a little bit too wide with Dong sitting here playing pretty nitty, you can just apply so much pressure. Both preflop and postflop, right? You have to realize your preflop bluffs are still going to get called sometimes, but postflop you're going to be able to make people fold the vast majority of the time, which is very, very, very beneficial. Ace Jack offsuit. Seems like a reasonable hand to raise. And once you get jammed on, I think you have to call. Seems like an easy call to me. Yeah, Dong's been really nitty. It's pretty brutal. He's been so nitty. Like, normally Ace Jack's a snap call. I'm actually thinking it through now that given Dong has been so tight, could you ever fold this? I just don't think he can. I think once people realize they're the shallowest stack by a decent chunk, like we are here, you should probably call it off with the Ace Jack. It's unfortunate, but I think you have to call it off. She drills a jack on the flop. <laughs> River is a diamond. King is live. Ah, oh, queen. And just like that, Kristen has loads of chips. And we are three-handed. Goodness gracious, this has escalated quickly. Running hot is accurate. On the site, they give you a little fire icon if you have been running hot. Notice Bellarmino's is just, like, torched here. <laughs> Isla's hanging out. Kristen's is pretty fiery as well. We don't even know what's happening here. They're going off with emote, emote icons. All right, three-handed. Okay. Third place gets $190,000. Okay. Second gets two sixty-five. I'm sorry, two sixty-one. dollars 61 Third gets three fifty-six. Ace-2 seems like a reasonable raise. Um, queen. So this is a scenario now where 
Yes, there is still ICM implications, but I think you can kind of ignore them. Not extremely ignore them, but like right there with that queen jack, I would just three bet it and then fold it if I get raised. I think that's fine. Um, Kristen is very incentivized to raise wide from exactly the button because that's when she's going to be in position. So you in turn should three bet sometimes from the small blind and queen jack also seems like a fine bluffing hand to me. This is a board you want to be continuation betting larger on compared to a queen 6-2 board because big blind usually lacks the nuts but has a lot of hands like, uh, well, an 8, a 10-8, right? They can conceivably fold to a bet, which I think is a fine fine fold to the bet. We discuss this over at PokerCoaching.com a lot. Typically, you want to bet bigger when the board's, when the opponent's range that will continue against the bet is thought to be reasonably strong. And on queen jack 10, if they continue, it's going to be with a queen of jack or a 10, which is a pretty good hand, right? All right. Let's see if Bellarmino goes for it. This is the same same logic, right? Where notice this ace three, even on this board, is certainly not loving it. It's not going to fold, but it's not loving it. It's definitely loving that turn. But even then, like, imagine, like, what, what, what do you really beat if your opponent wants to put all their money in? Random ace, jack, or ace, 10. That's it, right? So even though Kristen just drilled two pair here, it's certainly not an amazingly great scenario. Like, you're happy with your hand. Don't get me wrong. You're not trying to fold it. But it is essentially a weak, a weak premium hand or a strong marginal hand, somewhere in that range. And if you get, like, check raised on the turn, it sure, sure is bad. But I think you have to bet like she does. I notice when um, Bellamino just sizes up a little bit on the flop, it sort of polarizes his range to a good hand or nothing. And when that's the case, top pair bad kicker is not great. And even top and bottom pair is not amazing. Four big blind rays from the small blind. All right. Kind of surprised at the four big blind rays with this hand. I don't, I don't think you mind seeing the flop with this hand. Be interested to know Kristen's overall small blind strategy. I guess we'll figure it out. Maybe she's just going to 4x a lot. She does bet flop and get fold. I have definitely been raising a lot from the small blind recently. They're just betting flop, betting turn, betting river, just going for triples. And I think that's pretty strong. Most people fold way too often by the river, at least in my experience and the experience of people I have discussed this with. So blast them. Bellarmino may get out of line on this one. Let's see. He does not. <laughs> I wonder if he had like 6-5 of clubs if he would have gone for the check raise. I think it's certainly reasonable. On boards like 10-10-5, you have to search kind of hard to find your bluffs. And usually the bluffs you want to use are hands that lack showdown value that have backdoor equity. Like on 10-10-5, you want 7-6 of clubs and um, queen-9 of clubs, like with backdoor draw, stuff like that. Small blind limp. It's like, I, I would feel like I'd be better off raising this hand to four big blinds because then you extract a lot of fold equity, right? Because this hand really doesn't necessarily want to see the flop. So I think I'd, think I'd prefer raising that, but you have to presume she knows better than me. So it's always good to observe that, analyze that. We'll study it away from the table and see what we learn. Ace four suited min raises, nine eight suited will probably call. It's a good flop for Kristen. <laughs> so with the middle pair and flush draw, if you face a bet, I usually just find a call, but raising's fine too. You can really go either way. On the turn with a flush, I think I would probably just go for a bet. A pretty big bet. You want to polarize your range to some extent. You'd love to have some random like queen of diamonds blank that you bet to get fold equity. So you have some good hands and some bad hands in that spot. Bellamino raises. So notice Bellamino and Kristen almost have the same stack now, which we may see Kristen start to take over if Bellarmino continues opening a little bit too wide and uh, Kristen keeps making the nuts. <laughs> 
This is, so okay, last hand, let's take a second and think about this. Last hand, I mentioned that Kristen should bet the turn with the nuts. Why? Well, in that previous hand, the opponent was likely drawing very live with any random diamond, and when it goes check-check on the flop, they're gonna have a whole lot of one pair type hands they will call a turn bet. Here, when it goes check-check on the flop, Bellarmino likely has an ace. So if he has an ace, what's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna bet. And if he bets, you can then put in the check raise and put him in a miserable scenario. So when the turn hits your opponent's range very well, you wanna be checking a lot, even with your best hands. And when the turn is not so great for your opponent, and especially if your hand is vulnerable to being outdrawn, like reasonably vulnerable to being outdrawn, like a low flush is on a, four di a three diamond board, that's when you wanna be betting. So you see the difference, right? In both scenarios, we have an effective nut hand, but here we're not vulnerable to getting outdrawn and the turn hits the opponent's range very well. Whereas in the previous hand with the flush, that was like marginal for the opponent and um, your hand is very vulnerable to getting outdrawn, which leads you to be betting. Bellamino should just keep checking this. This is a very clear marginal made hand in my mind. On the river, I think, I guess Kristen needs to go for a bet now. She has to think she's against a king or a 10 a lot. So you should probably go for a medium bet, 400K or something. She does go 600K, which is fine, fine and good. And the 10 finds a fold. All right, let's pause this for now. We'll be back next time with some more hands from this World Series of Poker final table. Again, thanks to GG for letting me review the content. If you like this, click like, click subscribe. I would appreciate it. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And I'll talk to you next time.